Grand rising loves, this is the altar spread for the collective today. So the sacred geometry that showed up is the Kabbalah. This is the tree of life. And the tree of life is believed to hold all knowledge for ascension. But it is our connection with trees that is the lesson. And so um, this actually showed up in the reverse, which speaks of a disconnect and um, losing the exploration of the child self, not only into your environment outside of you, but to the environment inside of you. And so it's believed that meditation on the tree of life or this, the Kabbalah, also a tree of life, will open those pathways to greater wisdom and self-knowledge and then, of course, ascension. And we are in an ascension process right now. But how many of you even understand the message of trees? And I love this because every ancient indigenous culture revered trees not only for their life healing sap but for the aromatics of the sap the healing properties of the sap but deeper than that is the wisdom of the tree tree beings have been here long before we have long before humans walk this earth and they hold knowledge, but there is this intricate system of communication beneath the surface that trees are privy to and share with one another. And it's a beautiful, cohesive existence. If one tree is suffering, it's not getting water, other trees will actually relinquish some of their nourishment to help nurse that one tree. And a felled tree actually is fertilizer for the other surrounding trees. So it's almost like a sacrifice that helps to perpetuate the other ones that may be stronger. It's really powerful, cohesive community. But the trees are strong on their own. They are wise on their own, and that's how they are able to cohesively exist with others because not a one tree sees itself as better, and there's no competition between the trees. And so that's a beautiful lesson that we can all learn. And it was one of the earliest things I taught my children to lay in the grass, watch the sky, but to connect with everything that holds us, and then to listen to the trees. And I remember my daughter, she was probably three, and she looked over at me, she's like, can you hear the trees, mommy? And I said, I can. And she said, that one's happy. And she pointed to a mesquite that was in our yard, and I said, you're right she is and it was so beautiful because I in that moment I also gave my daughter permission to be connected and stay connected and I I believe that both of my children hold that reverence still it's an invaluable lesson to teach our young children and then to honor them in that connectedness. And that is what this card in reverse is telling us to return to. To unknow what you've been taught and to know that you really don't know shit, <laughs> but to go into everything as if it's new. And that's where true wisdom can be obtained in the experience of everything as if it's new. Explore everything as if it's new. Rainbow showed up. 
I love the message of rainbow because everyone knows that rainbows bring the message of brighter days and the coming out of the storm, right? So it's the message of hope and peace and unicorns and sprinkles. <laughs> but really, the rainbow anciently talked about the mirror of our ascension process because a full light body, this is someone who is completely um, in spirit and that the rainbow was just evidence of that outside of our bodies. And I love that idea. And I often tell people, I hope your day is a succession of miracles so that you can witness the divinity of you outside your body. But truly, the only way that that can happen is if you're really noticing the miracle inside of you. And you do that by becoming a more open vessel to hold the spirit. And you can only become a more open vessel by putting in the work. You have to walk the talk. You can't just talk the talk. And then Cuprite showed up. This is the receptive power of our feminine energy. So even if you're male, you have this feminine energy. And really part of our cohesiveness outside, being able to be connected and witness miracles, is being more balanced in our inner environment. And a huge part of that is balancing our masculine feminine energy to become more whole. And so the deepest feminine energy is receptivity. This is the dark, deep void of the feminine energy. It is the very active inactivity that makes people uncomfortable. And why literally like 98% of women can't fucking do it. And that's just being honest. And so this was something that I needed um, that I needed to share yesterday and did a quick live video, but it really, this conversation needs to happen more often and in longer increments so that people can ask questions and really understand this because this is a very deep concept that's important for people to understand um, because they're per perpetuating feminine energy is this beautiful sensual energy and it is, but that's shallow ass shit. There is so much more deeper about the feminine energy. And so a lot of spiritual accounts say, okay, well, I've, I've got this, so I'm good. No, sister. <laughs> There's depths that you have not even glimpsed yet. And this is part of what it is. So I'm not surprised that this showed up at all. And this is Cuprite. This is the only piece, well, the, uh, the other piece is not as lovely as this, of course. <laughs> so this is a pendant, but this is Cuprite. How beautiful is that? With all those dark, deep veins, this is a very grounding stone, but the message of Cuprite is, I receive so that I may have the power to co-create so that really uncomfortable nature of being actively inactive and receiving it has a lot to do with trust and safety and so really learning how to do it with yourself first is so important and then the real challenge is can this happen outside of my body? And I want to be a cohesive co-creator so that I can witness miracles and connectedness outside of myself. But you gotta start inside. And then lastly, Ingonyama showed up, honor of the ancient king. This speaks and this is beautiful because I'm talking about balance. This speaks very highly 
to the masculine energy of giving. But here's the thing. We all need to heal this masculine energy within us because a lot of people have this down, you know, like the alpha female, the alpha male, that masculine drive to succeed is really kind of toxic. The masculine, the true divine masculine energy is being able to give of yourself as if in service and sacrifice, but it's a power that is not threatening. It's not competitive. It's deeply, deeply reverent. And that bit, the reverence, is the part that the male energy in a lot of you that people are not touching. And that's the deep, 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 just like receptivity is the deep, deep, deep. Where, you know, this is the call to dive deeper. Get out of the shallows. And I'm going really long with this video today, sorry. So I decided that I'm going to do my own speak. <laughs> so instead of the prayer that's in the book, because I am also being called in my own altar pulls lately to step into the role of spiritual teacher and spiritual leader and um, I'm pushing past the discomfort for myself to yes do that to say that I don't need someone else's words so let's shake out our shoulders and let's unify our breath deep inhale and then release with an audible sigh. <sighs> I call upon all the energies that hold us to teach us the true power of connectedness, the true power of balance, that it is not a weakness to surrender, but rather it takes great courage and endows us with the highest of wisdom. In this surrender, we co-create a miraculous and cohesive community. And this is how we step back into unity consciousness, a community devoid of judgment doubt and fear, a community that vibrates at the frequency of pure love, where we are all co-creators and alchemists of this love energy. Let us all witness the miracles and connectedness as we all ascend and become more balanced and whole within. Let the validation occur in our everyday occurrences, in the scenarios that we are afforded to witness outside of our physical bodies. I am grateful. I am grateful for this human experience and I am grateful for the connections that I have made and the hearts that I may touch and open. Aho.